If your attic's not ventilated properly, that can cut the life of your roof by years. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk to an expert about how you should have a properly ventilated attic. So this is Slate Baker, and he's with Lamanco Vents. And what he's gonna do is he's, he's got this cool little house here, and he's gonna show us how ventilation works. And we're gonna talk about ridge ventilation and even a turbine vent today. All right, so this has what every house should have. It has intake vents here at the bottom, an exhaust vent up here at the top. And in this case, we're using a ridge vent. So what's important about any kind of ridge vent, and that's what this machine's meant to demonstrate, is the importance of this external baffle. This baffle is not covered by the shingles. The shingles come to right here. And then the other thing that's important is how this is designed underneath. You see all these half circles here? This product is designed in a way that it passes Miami-Dade County's wind-driven rain test, which again is 8.8 .8 inches of rain per hour at 110 miles an hour. It can't leak and it can't blow off. Now, now before we put this back on the house, your competitors, what is in here? Most of them will have something like this and then they'll put a big filter through here. We've already discussed the impact that filters have on airflow. So we design a product that we're, don't, we're not dependent on that filter to pass a wind-driven rain test. That's why they put those filters in there. So you also notice that we have this little end plug. So if you have to cut the product, just make sure that this is on the outside so water doesn't come in through the outside because you'll have that end plug right there. Yeah, so if, if you want to see what the filters actually do, what effect a filter has on the ventilation that you get in your attic, Click on this video right here. So why don't we see how this works? So what this machine's meant to design, or meant to display, is the impact of an external baffle. So I have this little fan that's blowing at about six, seven miles an hour. It's hitting this corner right here, and it's creating a vortex here, which is a vacuum. Okay, so it will draw air. Your opening right here is a total of an inch and a half. That's all your opening needs to be for a ridge vent. So this air as it passes over the other side, it creates another vortex. You can't see it, but this, demonstra this will show it. The reason why you want to have an external baffle is hot air, as the cool air comes in, the hot air comes up, it, goes, it doesn't like to go back down. So you need to have a product that will pull it back down. So I'll go ahead and put a little bit of fog in here. This fog is meant to represent heat and moisture and you want to get that out of your attic. So we'll go ahead and put some fog in and see how this product forms. So you can see all the smokes coming out of both this side and out of that side. Okay, and so, so on, the, on a ridge vent product that's got the, the fiber baffle in there, mm -hmm. it's actually, correct me if I'm wrong, it's actually preventing the airflow, the airflow from doing this which is what it's supposed it's, to do. It's slowing it down. Slowing it doesn't it down. prevent it, but it definitely inhibits airflow. No okay. doubt about that. But you can see that attic's already, you know, completely cleared out. This particular kind of ridge vent, we call it our low omni ridge. It comes with its own coil nails. And that's nice because you already have the right length of nail because you need a different length to put this on than your shingles. So it's nice that you already have that. You don't have to worry about being at the end of a job and not having the right length of nail. And so if for a roofer or a homeowner. Why would, why would a roofer or a homeowner want to consider using a ridge vent as opposed to your other products? It's personal preference, it's aesthetic. Some people just like the look of this better. Um, you know, it certainly performs well. You don't see the penetrations through the roof. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, I think that's the primary reason that people tend to go to this product. Now talk about a competing product that doesn't have what I'll call the fins or the gills okay. on it. Well, why don't we grab one and throw it on here and see how it there does. There we go. <laughs> okay, so this is another competing product out there. It's very popular in this market. In fact, it's very popular all throughout. You'll notice that it has no external baffle. It's basically a, a corrugated plastic, and they put this real heavy filter through there. It's like a woven And fabric. why did they put the filter on there as opposed to what you guys do? because they can't pass a wind-driven rain test without it. It's the only thing that's keeping water from coming in, because water would only, see how wide that is? Mm -hmm. So that's a, water would come right in through here and it would leak in a wind-driven rain is test. Is this a patented? It is. Is that why they can't do what you do? I don't know that it's why they haven't come up with a, a okay. different design. I know this, when I first started selling this 
kind of product back in the 1990s. It did not have a filter in it. Okay. This is something that's been introduced after. And this is basically just like corrugated plastic. Yeah. Right. It's just core it plast. Yep. That's all. It's like your yard signs that you see. Yeah, here. yard signs. That's right. So we can put it on here, and we can introduce a little bit of smoke in here and see how much actually comes out of here and here. So as you can see... Yeah, there's nothing coming out of here. It's, it's coming out of here. And, and this, this doesn't exist. What's happening right. now is because there's a breeze, it's actually pushing the air back in, and you can see it flowing out of your soffit vents. See? Oh, yeah. And so if I take the air off completely, if it's, not spin, if it's no wind, again, this, this air is meant to represent heat and moisture. You can see that it's basically just trapped in there. Nothing is coming down here because you got to create draw to pull it back out through these openings. Yeah, so it's, it's basically, it's effectively doing nothing. And just like in Very the last little. video we saw, when we put the, the screen on the soffit vent or even on the exhaust vent, it went to zero, yes. zero percent ventilation. Yeah, very little gets through this, through this filter. So we can grab a different kind that also doesn't have a, uh, an external baffle on it. And it's this product right here. It's basically like a Brilla pad. I put this on the top of it. This would mimic your ridge cap shingle just so it keeps form and it can sit on this. So you can see here that, you know, it's basically relying on air to go through this, you know, come up and work its way out through here. But again, there's nothing to create that draw. Is this for a metal roof? No, this is for, it gets put under shingle roofs. Okay. Yeah. I mean, perhaps some people put it on metal roofs, but I see it more on Well, I asked that because it's... Yeah, I just put that on there to keep it, give it form. Oh, I Because otherwise you. it wouldn't sit on my smokehouse here. So we'll go ahead and put some fog in here, maybe put a little bit of a breeze back on. Fill this up. And so you can see, yeah, once again, this doesn't exist on a real house, that little opening. Right. But I'm going to do a little science experiment here. I'm going to create my own external baffle. Look how much smoke now is coming through the top of that, right here on this side. Oh, you mean like... Yeah, right here. I'm creating draw now, and oh. I'm pulling it air out. Watch what happens as soon as I take that away. It disappears. So, so what you're saying is that roofers need to install something like <laughs> <laughs> No, no. I think just buy one that has it naturally integrated into it. It's a very good question. Now, these people who make these, they've, they've learned that they don't perform super well. Yeah. Right? So they've come up with their own brands. So here's another one. This is your question when you asked earlier, what else do you see under here? This is what you see. You see a filter like this that, you know, it's the only thing keeping wind-driven rain from getting pushed up to the opening. And that's, that's the whole purpose for why they put that filter in there. But you will see that this will vent. It will pull, create, draw. They, had, they created this external baffle. And so this will perform much better than the last two products we looked at. And this is still a, computer's, uh, it a competitor's is. product. It's a competitor's product, but you can see at least brand new that it oh, creates yeah, draw. Right here. It's pulling, yeah, it's yeah. pouring smoke out there, yeah. So it does function. Now, over time, filters tend to get dirty, clogged, so this is the best that you'll ever see this product perform. Hmm. Well, and on, on these, <laughs> I hate to say it, but the best thing about this is that it's great squirrel nesting material. Oh. And squirrels will eat right through this stuff to get at this, at oh, this wow. stuff. And then you end up with just a huge hole in your roof. So here's another product that we make um, that has a bunch of half circles in it. You can buy it with or without a screen. Some people like a screen. Some fire codes require a screen. Um, so if you see all these half circles in here, we pass the wind-driven rain, rain test with or without a screen. Some HOAs require a screen, and it's just, so if people want it, we'll make it. Okay. And it doesn't, you know, we saw what impact a screen has. It's pretty minimal. It's about 5% of the airflow that it will inhibit. But we can put this one on here and see just how much airflow this moves through this, this guy here. Oh, yeah. Right there. Yeah, a lot. This is clearing that air out. You can see the air come in, intake coming in and that air being just drawn completely out of that attic space. 
So it's, it's a very good product. I think it's also important to note, do you notice that we have these tabs right here every six inches? Okay. So does air always blow perpendicular to a ridge line? So it doesn't always blow, par if it's blowing parallel, we're still creating that draw on these to pull that air out of that attic space. Okay. So it works regardless of what way the, air's blow the wind's blowing. So you contrast that with some other brands out there. They don't have mm -hmm. that in here, right? So there's not, if air, the wind's blowing parallel or parallel to the ridge line, it's not going to create draw. It just goes over it. Yeah, it'll just go over it. That's why it's important to have these in the design. Hmm. So product design matters. And by the way, does this look like a filter you see anywhere else in your house? <laughs> yeah, on your furnace. How often are you supposed to replace that furnace Once filter? Once a month. How often is this getting replaced? Once a month. We do every, <laughs> every month. Right. Yeah. So Homeowners call us and they say, I need my ridge vent, ridge vent, ridge vent replaced. Yeah, that's, that's the challenge with filters, once again, is they get dirty, clogged. And this is outside. This isn't inside your house. This is out. Right. And so it'll be a lot cleaner, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. It, it, they tend to get wet, then they get dirty, then it yeah. dries. Then it gets wet, then dirty, then it dries. And so pretty soon it gets pretty caked in there. Yeah. So lastly, I think... Uh, we should see what a turbine vent look, does. So I'll cover up this where we had our ridge vent. And so we'll go ahead and put this on there. Now, as you can see, just a little breeze that starts spinning. But we'll, we'll demonstrate that this actually works much like a pump. It'll, it really draws the air out. So once again, we'll go ahead and introduce some fog into here. You can see the smoke oh, yeah, coming, coming out of there. Yeah, right. I'll turn this off just be, so we can control this. Like, look how much smoke that pulls through it. And that's like one of these will do what four slant backs will do. And if it's a windy day, this can outperform a power vent. Tell, and and wow. the nice thing about this is it has a forever warranty. Yeah, okay, tell me about the forever warranty. So the forever warranty is as long as this is on that roof, will warrant its parts that they will work. And, and you've got a specific example I do have a, of that. a specific Tell example. Tell us that story. So uh, about two and a half years ago, Utah had 110 to 120 mile an hour winds roll through there. North of Salt Lake City, there's a little community called Farmington. Mm -hmm. It's the, known as the windiest city in the, on the Wasatch Front there in Utah. And so I got a call after that windstorm that one of them had blown off and two had stopped spinning. So I went out there and I saw it. It only had paint on the very bottom of it right here. So I knew it was quite old. I looked at the inside of it. I could tell it was ours. I went there expecting it to be somebody else's because I've never had that call before. So I went and I saw that it was ours and, I, and it didn't have a date stamp. Always we have a date stamp on the inside of these so we know how old they are. So I called our engineer, Dennis, and I said, hey, Dennis, I'm here. One of our vents blew off. And... There's no date stamp on it. And he's like, Slate, we started date stamping 40 years ago. He says, that's, that's a really old product. And I, so I said, what do I do about the warranty? He says, forever warranty, Slate. Give them, a, give them new vents. So I did. And so that's just the way, you know, it was a testament to me that Lamanco really does stand behind their products and mean what it says. And so, so the vent had been on there since at least sometime before 1978. So I went and called, uh, I, I went to the homeowner, I said, good news, you're going to get brand new vents. I said, out of curiosity, do you have any idea how old this is? And he said, when we built it in 1968, <laughs> which was the first year we ever made them, by the way. 1968. It's been in the windiest city there, spinning for that many years. And... Uh, Spinning without noise, we would assume. Yep, without noise. Yep. So we have an enclosed ball bearing system both at the bottom and the top um, that it's self-lubricating and that it does last a long, long, long time, which is why mm. we give this product for a forever warranty. We believe it will outlast most roofs. Is this your favorite vent? Well, I like them all. I've used them all, but I, this is my favorite vent for a hip roof. Absolutely. So this has shown you how attic ventilation can add years to the life of your roof, but you're going to need more information. So what I want you to do now is click on this video right here. And if you need more information about general roof maintenance tips, click this playlist right here.